is taught. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart. Today we're taking a look at animating the photograph inside our motion graphics icon series. Um, you can watch these videos in any order so don't worry. However, I do recommend you watch the camera one first as in that one I explain lots of the details uh, for basic stuff that I'm going through. How to create, move, uh, affect keyframes, draw the shapes, things like that. I will be explaining them in every other video that I do in this series as well. But the camera one I do some very core basics. Uh, otherwise, each of these would end up being 45 minutes long, which is stupid. Um, so if you haven't watched it, go watch the camera one. Otherwise, you can watch any of the others in any order that you like. So let's just dive right in then. Last time we created this. Looks pretty good. The camera animates on. It spins around because we've attached it to a null object. We're going to be doing the same thing this time around. But instead of using the camera, we're going to use the photograph. So. Let's drop in our single simple icons one dot JPEG and let's press open square bracket to push it to the end of where the camera is. That way we can have the camera animating and then the rest of it can animate in as well. OK, let's zoom in like so and using our rectangle tool, create a mask around the photograph. Select off it and then choose to realign our anchor point to the middle. I've used a plugin, but you can just use the pan behind tool and click and drag your anchor point around the place, however you like. Um, brilliant. Let's hit P to bring up our position keyframes and type in 960 by 540, which puts it into the middle of our 1080p uh, frame that we've got here. Just gonna lock off that solid along the bottom. So let's think about how this is pieced together. In the previous one, we thought about how the camera was made, what components sort of it was compromised of or com prized of rather. Um, this time it looks like everything we need is going to be inside this one frame here. So it makes sense that that frame is the first thing to come on. Then all the other elements can sort of animate on inside of that, which might look quite nice. Um, so let's just break it down then. We're going to need a rectangle for the frame around the outside. So let's just create that by clicking and dragging with our rectangle tool. About four pixels thick and the eyedropper colored of the frame works just fine going to call this one border. OK, uh, then we need the line for the mountains, the shape of the mountains underneath, so on and so on. So I'm just going to breeze through this because we did it all last time. I'm going to grab the pen tool, start clicking, holding shift to create our mountains like so. Making sure they end behind the other elements and we'll call this one mountain top. We then need a couple of lines for the sky here. Same thing for the pen tool, making sure I've selected off the previous layer each time. Otherwise, you'll be drawing a shape, several shapes inside one layer rather than separate shapes on separate layers. Um, shift it into place with open square bracket. Nice and simple, really quick. See, if I wasn't explaining this, it would be done already. This is such a simple technique to do. Um, let's grab our circle tool, change the color of our uh, border to the color of the sun. Roughly get the middle of that circle here and clicking, then holding control and shift so that it grows perfectly. And from the center, we'll just roughly overline that sun like so. Open square bracket pushes that layer to where the start point is. And we'll name this one sun up. We'll duplicate that. OK, take our fill, eyedropper it and eyedropper the fill of the sun underneath. And then holding alt, just click through our stroke until we get to nothing. So now we're left with just a fill uh, separate from our stroke of our sun. Let's press control, open square bracket to push that layer down a little bit. Um, and then let's just hold shift and right to position it over where it should be in the image. Perfect. Only thing left then is to create these mountains underneath. Let's zoom out a little bit, grab our pen tool, make sure we've got no layer selected. OK, uh, make sure our fill is the right color. And it's just a simple case of tracing these mountains around like this. Holding shift so that we get perfect 45 degree angles. Oops, a bit far on that one. Go to about there. And then again, control, open square bracket, pushes it to the bottom. And then just open square bracket, pushes the in point to where we want it to be. Nice and simple, this one, not very many layers at all. We can now check that against the original image. Seems pretty accurate. We can delete the original image. We don't need it anymore. Um, OK, first thing we're going to probably want to animate then is this 
border of the image sort of scaling up into place. Um, what we can do with that then is just make sure that we've got our mountains named and put the border above everything else just so we know that it's on top. Let's select all of our layers and use the butt capital <laughs> to make the uh, ends of them round. So you can see it's got round ends here. If you don't have this plugin, you can just simply twirl down your layer, go to contents, whatever the contents is, and then stroke, uh, and then choose your line cap to be round cap. However, this just means I could do it all layers in one click, which is nice and quick. You can see though that now we've done that, these sort of broke out just a little bit on the end here. So what we can do is fix that by selecting our mountain top layer, going to our pen tool, clicking on one of those points, and we can just drag it in a little bit so that it doesn't overlap. Oops, gonna have to join that up. So we can go to our selection tool and select it instead of the pen tool, which means it won't draw anything. And we can just shift that like so. There we go, happy with that. However, what I'm not happy with is these points of these mountains are sharp, whereas everything else in the image should be round. So let's select all of our layers again, and I'm going to alt click on butt capper this time and that's going to turn all of those and just round off their edges. Again, if you don't have it, you can just go down to your path tool here, go to stroke and go to line join and change that to round join instead of line join. Perfect. We are ready to start animating. Let's grab. Um, ah, We haven't named these. Line one. Line two. That'll do. Um, let's grab our border. And animate that. We're not going to animate the scale because as I um, said in the last episode, if you do scale these things down, the lines do get thinner, which doesn't look too good. What we're instead going to animate is the path. So twirl down your border layer, go to the contents, rectangle, rectangle path, and keyframe its size. Let's move on by the agreed amounts that we've done in the previous episode. So we made sure all our animations were uniform by moving on um, in distance, in time, uh, the same amount each time. So it was 15 frames. Control, shift and right will move you along 10 frames. Left will move you back. Um, just control and left and right will move you along a single frame. So that's 15 frames like that. Let's hit another keyframe in like so. And then let's move along 10 frames and keyframe again. What we're gonna get is that sort of bouncing thing that you saw in the intro, okay? And we're gonna do that by assuming that this last keyframe is where we want it to be, which it is because that's the way we drew it. And then this first keyframe is gonna be pretty much invisible and this first keyframe is gonna be an overshoot, okay? So we go to the overshoot keyframe and we're gonna unlink the size and increase the height by stretching it out like that, okay? Just a little bit just so that it overshoots a touch. Then on this one here, we're just gonna bring that size all the way down to zero. That does leave a line, but in animation, that's gonna to be totally fine. If you wanted to, you could have another keyframe um, earlier than that and just drag that down to zero and animate that as well, like we did in the previous episode. However, um, we can just start from here. It will look good. Let's select all of those keyframes. And at the moment, it looks kind of crappy and boring. Yeah, it looks like a PowerPoint animation. Mm -hmm. So we need to ease them in a little bit. We can hit F9, which adds an easy ease. Gives it a little bit more bounce. Or you can do the same thing with right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Um, and then we can give it a bit more life by going to our graph editor. Now you should see a curve like this. If you don't, if you see a curve like this, it's because you're on the value graph and not the speed graph. If you click the second to left icon in your row of icons along the bottom, it looks like a little chart. You can then change it to edit speed graph like so, and you should see what we see here. I'm gonna grab our middle keyframe by selecting it. And as you can see, if I line up the playhead, that little dot here, the yellow dot aligns with the keyframe that we created before. Okay, I'm going to then click the little handle to the side of it and I'm going to drag these over to the left to influence them more. So that's going to go from fast to slow now. Okay, so fast to slow. And then we can push this one towards the right so it goes slow to fast and then tapers off. So now we've got a nice little bounce. Okay, bounces out and sort of settles back in itself. Exactly what we want. Perfect. Every other animation we do is going to be similar to the 15, 10 split that we've got, unless it's just 15 by itself. There are going to be sometimes that rule doesn't come into play, but most of the time it will. Okay, let's figure out what we want to start doing next then. I'm going to say just as this gets large enough to cover all those mountain lines, I'm going to go back a single frame, like so, and I'm going to start the animation for these mountains drawing themselves in. 
So let's select that layer, hit U, and that collapses everything down for us. And then go to mountain top and add in a trim path, okay? So we're gonna twirl it down, hit add, and choose trim path. Now what trim path does is when I drag this end keyframe down, it's gonna trim the end of the path down, nice and simple. Let's drag it all the way down to zero. Let's put a keyframe there. And you guessed it, we're probably gonna move on 15 frames. So control shift right, and then one, two, three, four, five, with just control and right. We're gonna add in a second keyframe there, and we're gonna move it all the way up to 100. There's no bounce back for this one because it's just finishing. You know, it'd look weird if it overshot. So that's all we need. F9 those to easy ease them. Go to your speed graph, select both, and just drag it over. So it goes from fast to slow. Nice and simple. I am moving quite quickly on this one, but like I said, uh, it's because I went slowly in the camera one. So if you haven't seen that one yet and you're struggling to follow along, make sure you do go and watch the camera one first and then come back here. And I guarantee you'll be able to keep up. There's no problem at all. Okay, let's have a look at that then. Perfect, looks good to me. In fact, it might move a little bit too fast. So what we could do is shift this keyframe along. Instead of control shift right, which moves the playhead, okay, we're gonna select a keyframe and hold alt shift right, which moves the keyframe, okay? So we've just moved that along 10. So if we move it along one, two, three, four, five, we've now got 30 frames, okay? Um, let's see what that looks like. Perfect, much better. In fact, a little bit too slow. There you go. So now it's ending just after the other one ends, which is just about right, which is what we want. Perfect. Let's have the rest of these elements start to animate in then. Um, let's do the mountains sliding out now. Um, but I want them to sort of grow from the line that we've done here. So we can have it start around here, and I'm going to have these uh, mountains underneath sort of come in and grow out from underneath here. However, we don't want them to show above this mountain line. So what we need for that is a mask layer. So I'm going to grab my pen tool like so. I could create a mask and then animate that separately uh, on the same layer as the mountains underneath. But that seems like a lot of effort when I can just use a shape as a mask instead. So what I'm going to do is click roughly here and just follow these along. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be underneath these lines anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to extend that shape all the way up above until I'm sure that it's going to cover this entire shape here if I put it underneath it. So if I were to grab this and push it all the way under, I know that it's going to cover everything. Not quite tall enough though. So let's just go in and adjust those so it goes up like that. Okay. Let's just put that mountain back in the right position first and then we'll adjust that mat, that mask. So we know that we're starting in the right position like so. Okay, great. This looks crap at the moment because our mask is still visible, which is rubbish. So what we're going to do is click our mountain low layer, just hit open square bracket, that pushes the start of the layer to be there, and do the same thing for our new mask layer. And then we're going to press control open square bracket to push that down so that the mask layer is one layer above the mountain. Okay, and then we're going to do something clever, and we're going to change the track map of the mountain low layer to be alpha mat mask, uh, sorry, alpha mat inverted mask. And what that means is anytime that this shape is anywhere that the mask isn't, it will show. But when those shapes overlap, it'll start to hide the mask, which is exactly what we want. Okay. So with our shape in its finishing position, let's go to mountain low, hit P and add a position keyframe. Let's move along 15 frames. Keyframe again, and then move along 10 frames, keyframe again. Now I've been through this before, I'm gonna have it overshoot and bounce back into position. So on our final keyframe, we'll leave it as it is. On our second keyframe, I'm gonna overshoot it a little bit. And on our first keyframe, I'm gonna push it all the way up until it's hidden by those mountains, like so. Not all the way up like this, okay? Because then all of our animation that we do, first of all, it will be visible, but all the animation we'll do will start from here and all of our timings will be off. You want it to be as close as possible to the mask without being shown, okay? Something like that. So then when you play it, it sort of starts and you get all of that motion as visible rather than not visible. Let's select all those keyframes, hit F9 to easy ease them, or you can right click keyframe assistant, easy ease. Go to your graph editor tool and do the usual. Click the middle one, drag it to the left and drag it to the right. And then when you look back on that, you'll see a cool little shape sliding into frame. Perfect. The last thing to animate then is the sun and the lines. 
Now, whilst these lines are supposed to simulate a little bit of cloud, they also do look like the tail end of the sun's movement, which we're going to use to our advantage. OK, as this shape starts to grow, probably about halfway through the border's first animation, we're going to have the sun whip in from the left. OK, and then have these lines be sort of its tailwind, if that makes sense. So let's grab our sun up and our sun down. Both of those position keyframes, but let's also have it scale up a little bit. So we're going to hit shift S as well, and that's going to bring up both position and scale. That's P for position, S for scale. Keyframe all four of those. But before we do anything else, we're going to want to move our anchor point to the center of each, like so. Or again, if you don't have that plugin, you can just click and drag those around. Um, now, let's move along 15 frames. Keyframe there, move along 10 frames keyframe there. This is our final position where we wanted to end up like before. This is our overshoot. So let's overshoot. Let's have it come past like this. And our initial position, let's have it be way over here. Like that. That looks good to me. So when this comes in, overshoots, comes back again. Looks weird to me that it's below the border though. So what we're going to do is push both of these layers up above the border. Let's Easy ease these with F9 or right click keyframe assistant. Go to our graph editor and add in some nice motion. Fast to slow and then a little bit of feedback there as well. So it goes fast to slow and then settles itself back in. Let's see. Perfect. Happy with that. Happy, happy, happy. I'm going to offset this lower sun a little bit later. So maybe three frames. One, two, three with control and right. And then. Um, Position that so that the keyframes start there, like so. Let's Alt and open square bracket to trim the layer and do the same thing on sun up. Perfect. But at the moment, they're still popping in a little bit. So what we want to do on our first one is scale this down to about 50. Do the same thing for this one here. Looks weird that they're still kind of popping in like that, but I don't think it'll look good if they grow from zero. Let's give it a go and see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks okay. We'll do that. That's fine. Let's zoom out and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'm happy with that. Okay, in that case then, we just need our lines to grow as our sun swishes past it. So from about here, we want this first line to come in and then we'll do the second one from the smaller sun. So we'll grab line two and line one, push them to the top so it's easier and press open square bracket to align them to the start of the frame. Let's grab line number one and move their center anchor points. Not that it matters for this. Um, and let's add a trim path animation. Nice and simple. Twirl that down and using our end keyframe, let's go from Ooh, let's use our start one so it grows the right way. Let's drag our start all the way up to 100. Let's move along 15 frames and drag that start all the way down to zero. Select both of those, hit F9 to give yourself a bit of easy ease, and then go into the graph editor like usual and make it fast to slow. Perfect. Moves a bit slow though. Let's move that across five frames with Alt and Left. Looks good to me. Let's copy these keyframes with control C and just paste them onto line two with control V. And we know that this layer comes in three frames later than the first sun. So one, two, three, and make line two start there. Okay, and let's see what that looks like. Perfect, happy with that. Let's take a look. Looks good to me, looks good to me. Cool, happy with that. So as before with the camera, at the very start of it, we added in these extra lines that weren't part of the design that disappear by the time they're done. If we wanted to be sneaky, we could just copy and paste those, but we'll do something a little bit different. We'll do some curved lines for this one. So let's go to where our animation is finished and using our pen tool with no layer selected, let's just draw a curved line. So I'm gonna click, so in the top right, click roughly in the middle, but click and drag this time. I'm gonna hold shift so that I know it's perfectly straight and then come down to roughly the same amount of distance away in the bottom left. That looks good to me. But it doesn't look too good because we've got a path instead, uh, fill instead of a stroke. So I'm going to go up to fill, hold alt, and click on that little thumbnail until it goes to the line through it, which means nothing. And then on the stroke, 
I'm going to choose this nice yellow, like so. Okay, happy with that. So let's get the start of our layer, add a trim path. Let's keyframe both the start and end, move along, say, 30 frames, I think we did before, which is two 15s. So still uh, according to our rules that we set up at the beginning. And let's set the second two keyframes to be 100, 100, and the first to be 0, 0. Again, if we were to drag through this, it looks like nothing's happening, but that's because the start is moving at the same speed as the end. So it's actually just moving along the line, showing us nothing. If we shifted this along, say three frames, and then took a look, we can see that we've got a line dying across the screen. It's gonna be boring though, because we haven't had any easing. So we're gonna hit F9 to add some easing, go to our graph editor and go from fast to slow. Let's take a look. Perfect, happy with that. However, I'm not super happy because they're not round. Let's add round ends to those lines, okay? Like this, like this, round ends. Round ends on everything, we love round ends. From there, let's just move along, say three frames. Let's duplicate that, uh, like so. And let's offset it a little bit with some rotation. Shift out the pattern a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. Not incredible. So instead, let's take all these keyframes and have it go the other way. Okay. Let's, in fact, let's push them a little bit off more like this and then center them visually so that they're definitely separate from each other. But let's hit U to bring up all the keyframes on our second one. Select all of them, right click, keyframe assistant, time reverse. And what this does is makes it go the other way. Okay. Perfect. However, the easing will now be messed up if you see under the graph editor, it's going the other way from slow to fast. May not be a problem, but I don't want it that way. So I'm going to select all of these and control click them to return them to standard keyframes. Then F9 again to add easy ease and make them faster slow. So if you watch that again, perfect. That's good to me. Let's put these at the beginning of our photograph. Again, shifting that one over a few frames. That looks brilliant. All right, let's do the same thing then that we did for the photograph where we pre-compose this. So select everything we need, right click, oops, select everything that we need, <laughs> right click and pre-compose, making sure you move all attributes to the new composition. And we'll call this one photograph. Again, we can create some scale and rotation keyframes um, and then apply them to a null, but we might as well just duplicate the null that we've already made last time. Um, I will do it again um, for this one though, because you may not have watched the previous tutorial, even though I recommend you should. Um, it's really simple to do. What we're adding here is when this grows in, like so, okay, looks kind of boring. This one spins in bounces around and stuff. That's because this is then attached to this null, okay? So if I go to the in point of this layer, using I to move the cursor to the in point, I can then hit Control Shift Alt Y, or layer new null, uh, and then create some position and rotation keyframes, uh, scale and rotation, sorry. So S Shift R brings up scale and rotation. Let's move along 30 frames, do the same thing, go back to the first one, shrink it down to 90, Move that one to negative 45. Add in some easing, go to the speed effects, uh, speed values, make it go fast to slow. Okay, so now that's gonna rotate and scale up slightly fast to slow. Let's go to when that's finished, okay? And then select our photograph layer, select our pick whip and click and drag it to null seven. And what that does is it makes this layer follow this layer. So when that comes in like so, it'll rotate in like that. All right, so let's take a look. Now this one looks more animated and that's because I've applied a preset to it from Ease and Wiz. Uh, all it does is elasticize the keyframes a little bit. So I've got Ease and Wiz here, elastic out, apply. And what it does is just applies a little bit of an expression to make this bounce a little bit more. But you can see that all it really does is overshoot it. And we did a lot of overshooting in this photograph already. So you should be able to figure it out. It's not in, it's not, you know, necessary. Hence why I'm only doing it as an added bonus. Let's have a look. Camera comes in nicely. 
photograph comes in nicely. Happy with that. All right, perfect. Well, that'll do for today then. Next time, we'll probably be taking a look at the boat icon. Probably the most fun one to do in these circumstances because we're going to be messing around with the timings a little bit so that it bobs around. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you did, let me know. Brilliant. And I'll see you all next time for the next episode of Motion Graphics Icons. See you then. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.